So now we're going to talk about the other serialization format, JavaScript object notation. Chances are good, as you go out there, you will very likely encounter more JSON than you will XML. Not that XML is bad. XML is better for rich and hierarchical documents, whereas JSON is best for just pulling data out of a system and moving it between two systems with the minimum of fuss. Um, this is Douglas Crockford. Uh, I have a great interview from him. He's a funny guy, very, very smart. Um, he claims he didn't invent JSON, he discovered it because it really is based on the literal notation for JavaScript. And it actually looks a lot like the Python literal notation for objects and for lists. Now, Douglas Crockford is a, quite a sense of humor. Uh, he wrote this book called JavaScript, The Good Parts. That's the little one right there. And then JavaScript, The Comprehensive Guide. And the, the sense of humor is all the stuff that's in JavaScript that's not too useful. And while this is sort of a tongue in cheek, it also is trying to say that JavaScript, what Crockford is really saying here is JavaScript is a great language as long as you avoid the tricky bits and sort of keep it very, very simple. And JavaScript is indeed a great language. But, but JSON comes from JavaScript. You can read about JSON at json.org. Uh, JSON is not a international standard. It's not like an RFC. It really is. Douglas Crockford decided to register json.org and typed in some pages and people started reading it and people started using it. And partly that was because it was truly derived from the JavaScript, uh, no, uh, JavaScript literal syntax. So we're all ready to code. Here is some Python that's going to process some JSON. Keep it straight. Python process JSON. So again, I'm using the triple quoted string here. Now you'll notice the syntax that we are using is not uh, angle brackets, but instead curly braces. And so the curly brace, and then within the curly brace, you have key value pairs, name, colon, chuck. And the, key colon value and both sides have quotes. You can also have objects within objects, curly brace, key value pairs, key value, key value. Looks a lot like Python. And then you can do this. And so this is a structure that has one key value pair that's a string, another key value pair that's an object, another key value pair that's an object, and then these are key values within those contained objects. So this is a string that again probably was retrieved across the network from some other place. And we're going to pass that string into you know, the JSON library load s. Load s stands for load from string. So it reads this, parses it, looks at all the white space. White space again doesn't matter too much here unless it's in between double quotes. The white space doesn't matter. And so it parses it and then returns us a dictionary. So the thing that's different about JSON um, is that it's Structure and representation are simpler than XML. So in, in Python, everything either comes back as a dictionary or a list, or a dictionary within a dictionary, or a list within a dictionary. But it's all dictionaries. It's not a separate structure that you have to do gets and finds and find alls and lookups. So it's right there. So when we get this back, because this is a curly brace, info is a dictionary. And so we can just use the standard syntax of Python, info sub name. Well, that will bring, let's, let's clear this. So info sub name, we'll, we'll go find Chuck. So if you compare that with the XML, that's just a lot easier. Now, when we have info sub email, that's this thing. So info sub email is that thing. And then sub hide is this. So that's what comes out here. Okay, so it's really uh, nested dictionaries and lists. We, we haven't seen a list yet, but this is a set of nested dictionaries that it, it parses. And it's equally simple in other programming languages. This is a little more complex version where the outer element is a, a, a square bracket, which means it's going to be a list. And so we have a list of one comma two things. So this is a list of two dictionaries. So there's two dictionaries inside that list. So again, we take this string and we load it into, uh, you use the JSON parser to read the string and give us back, in this case, info is a list. It's got two items. If we print out info, it'll get a, give us two. And we're going to iterate through. And so if we're going to iterate through, item is going to, is going to first be this. And then it's going to iterate to this. And it's going to print out item some name, which is going to print out Chuck. 
item sub ID, which is going to print out uh, 001. Now you'll notice that there is no attributes, and that's because JSON is simpler. But we can have the X and it just as another item, so we say item sub X, and that's going to print the two out. And then it'll iterate to the next one, and it'll print out the same thing for those guys. And so JSON is simpler because it is you can't represent a, as complex a data structure, or you have to compromise and map it into a simpler data structure, but then it is lists and dictionaries, and so once you've got it parsed, it is easier to understand and to make use of. So that was quick. So that's part of, part of why everyone likes JSON better, is once you have come up with a format that you're gonna send it back and forth, it's easy to make it, and it's easy to read it. Now what we're gonna talk about is sort of Moving up a level, if you've got all these data formats and URLs that you can hit to pull those data formats down, what approach do you do as you start to construct applications that increasingly go from a single application to a networked application?